It's the Goyan Off Podcast with Rap Critic and Muse. This week's episode starts at an awkward point as connection fucked up on Tuesday and we picked things back up on Wednesday without a proper intro. I'm a text-to-speech program and I'm here to say that Goyan Off is the best podcast in the USA. Big Frida said she had to call Drake to get featured in his In My Feelings video. If you wanted to be featured in the Nice For What video, then that makes sense. But why would you assume that you would be featured in a music video for a song you weren't in? What this kind of reminds me of is kind of like, you remember in the early 90s where it was like, yeah, we're sampling all these big soul singer, you know, like on the heavier side women, eh, but we're not going to put them in the video. I was thinking the exact same thing. What comes to mind? Fucking uh, CNC Music Factory. Missy Elliott. Missy remember Elliott. when she did her song with Raven Simone, Raven Simone and they got some skinny chick in the video? So I'm <laughs> yeah. kind of side-eyeing this right now. Yeah. Because I'm kind of like, wait, is this, are we doing this all over again? Because, okay, yeah, you get the love from sampling the song, but why couldn't you, why couldn't she be in the, uh, in, in in that, see, the thing I'm worried about is, like, not the In the Feelings video. I'm talking about the Nice For What video. Right. Why wasn't she in that one? Maybe that's the point. Like, hey, try to make it up to me. But wh- where was the issue? And I'm, uh, and I, I say that as if, you know, I know I'm going to sound like I'm saying she shouldn't be in the video, but I think she should be in the video. But where was the outrage when Beyonce didn't show her you know, I, in the I, Formation video? You know, I remember specifically thinking of that. I specifically remember thinking that being like, wait, but then I thought like, well, maybe I just don't know what she looks like and she's in the video. And sampled, I, that's what I kept thinking. She sampled Big Frida and some other artist. What happened at the New Orleans? And I get that the video is focused on Beyonce and all that, but. Twice in a row does seem kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like for someone now it's a trend. Who, has been around for a while, mm-hmm. is finally kind of getting some recognition, but is still outside of the mainstream. Yeah. And she's specifically of the LGBTQ community. Allow me to be clear, because, you know, it's not like there is no gay or whatever representation, but if you notice, it's a lot of conventionally attractive people. Like, Frank right. a- Ocean, for example. Uh-huh. He is a handsome man. But it is kind of weird that this person who is... You like, I mean, like, you know, this is a bigger woman. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, really tall, very, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I feel like everything I'm saying is an insult, but I'm not trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Her name is Big Frida. I think it's fine. Exactly. That's what I'm trying like, to say. You know what I'm if you say she's big, I don't think people are going to be like, hey, hey, now. Going to come for your heads. <laughs> Travis's response to his controversy, I thought, sounded worse. Only sidestepping for a second to an album we're going to talk about in a minute. Fucking Astro World, the uh, Travis Scott album. The album cover, I guess there's two different versions. One that's on Spotify, which is like kids at a theme park, and the other one where it's like half-naked women posing seductively or whatever. There's a trans woman in the back who claimed that, yeah, I was there for the photo shoot, and I don't know where I'm at in this picture. I'm not on there anymore. And Travis Scott said, oh yeah, she upstaged me, or like she upstaged the album cover. Like he was trying to be like, No, she was just too attention-grabbing for the... It sounded like he was trying to be complimentary, like, oh no, she was just such a knockout, you couldn't look at anything else. But, like, alright, like, you've got half-naked women on the cover. She is actually just posing seductively. She's not showing off anything, really, and she's, like, in the back. First of all, I want to talk about the kid album cover. What the hell is that? What are those kids doing? I don't like it. Am I supposed to get, like, that, oh, yeah, this was totally supposed to be, like, you're at a theme park for this album? Like, I didn't really... There was, like, a couple references to it, but not enough to merit this fucking album cover where it's like, oh, yeah, you're fucking entering a smoking Travis Scott face. Ending Travis Scott world? Like, is he that type of personality? Like, you know what I mean? Like, is it, like, ooh, the world of Travis Scott? Like, he's not... Insane clown posse. I'll put it to you like that. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Like it's not like, oh god, the world of Travis. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe we get into this album. We'll talk a little bit more about it. But I didn't like. I, I definitely got an aesthetic, mm. but I don't see necessarily like. I don't know. It's very vaguely. Uh, did you say theme park or like carnival? Because I could see carnival. It is more carnival. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, he doesn't really 
directly talk about any like it, anything he talks about it's really clear he's just talking about a stage show he's not talking about an actual carnival mm. you know the album um, cover i sent you by the way it's more or less like a sideshow attraction you got a woman naked uh like folded in a glass box you got like a, a contortionist bending oh backwards. yeah i've seen this wait uh, well then what's the problem who's the person who's missing well she she She's not there. <laughs> That's the point. Oh, oh I yeah. thought there was a she version. Is, uh, she is over, like, opposite the two people, like, on the right of the person bending backwards. She was, like, on the other side bending over. Yeah, I mean, it, it's very, very slight because she is, like I said, she's in the fucking back. So to even argue that, like, oh, yeah, she was, like, taking attention away is kind of bullshit. Oh. Just, just barely? Over there? Yeah. All the way over there. <laughs> no, that would not have been upstate. Get the fuck. Wait, uh, hold I'm on, saying. hold on. Let's see what he said. What did he actually say? Astral World is about love and expression, not hate. This is very important for me to speak up about. Growing up, I've been taught to accept everyone, not to cast people away, but to bring them into your home. I have nothing but respect for the LGBTQ community. I want to use my voice to make it clear that everyone on this planet is as equal and fucking awesome to the next. Me and La Chapelle set out to... Okay. Uh, set out to create images that I grew up watching him create for years that inspired me. Yo, Amanda, you did upstage everyone, even me, and I can't wait for everyone to see the booklet that me and Dave put together. Wait! But she's still not on the album cover, though, so... Yeah. I mean, unless I'm wrong and he said something else, this was his response, right? It was, I like gay people. It's like, okay, are you putting her back on the cover? Is something going to change? And and like I said, that cute little, <laughs> you upstaged me, that's why I had to take you off. That feels kind of spiteful, honestly. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it still doesn't really give a... Yeah, it makes you look like you're scared that people are going to fucking upstage you. When you're not even on the... You're not even on the fucking thing. A giant weird-ass thing of your face is on there. Yeah, and it's like, that wasn't gonna... Like, is he talking about the golden, yeah, face? Because that wasn't going to be upstaged by no. someone all the way off to the left. Now, I'm sorry, but no, no matter what you put on there, that's what I'm noticing first. There's nothing too significant about the way this person looks that makes you go like, wait, what's going on over here? She doesn't even have enough defining features to really tell. In fact, it would be more, like, I'd say it's way more distracting with the chick who literally looks like she has no clothes on in the front sitting on the purple seats. Yeah, seriously. You, you, you're not going to say that's distracting? <laughs> I don't know. It's it's all very strange. Um, and I also want to talk about the the actual the the album cover that I saw on Spotify. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck are these kids doing? Like, is this kid like freaking out and about to do a flip or something? And there's popcorn like all on the floor. Like, does everyone just like like is it is this kid really jumping for joy? <laughs> like enough to just like I as a kid, I have never been so excited. I wouldn't be this excited for Disney World. That I would just spill my food. That popcorn's gonna be expensive, too, and you're wasting it now. Yeah, exactly! Like, what the fuck is this kid happy about? <laughs> the only thing I could figure out is, like like you said, there's popcorn all over the floor. Maybe spilling your popcorn is part of the fun, and he's just excited to throw his popcorn away and do like everyone else is doing. Because, yeah, it's just littered with fucking popcorn is everywhere. We gotta, we gotta get an interview with that kid just to be like, what What did they tell you to do? Like, what? <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Travis Scott. No, fuck him. We're going over his head. We're talking to the kid. <laughs> the artist thing is rage. There's like a guy, like, with, with a push broom, but I can't yeah, see it, it enough. <laughs> it's gonna take you a while to get all this stuff up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad he started while it's still fucking daylight. <laughs> Wait, is he still there at night? Hold on. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> so, I get it if that's the thing, right? It's it would like, be cool if there was actually, like, a story to both of these album covers, like... <laughs> and, and the other one, he's, like, over by the side, and he, he's, like, leaning on his broom, like, whew, like, wiping his forehead off. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about Ski Mask, the Slump God, mm. and his album, You Will Regret. Very ominous. Requested by Malisha Satello Jr. And if there is an album that you would like to request for us to review on the podcast, it is as simple as a one-time pledge to either of our Patreons, patreon.com slash rapcritic or patreon.com slash muse. 
Check the pages for details. Everything that I heard in Slump God's freestyles on Double XL is exactly what I got. It was exactly what it said on the tin. R- remember when I told you, like, you know, he's not great, but he's very interesting, and I want to hear what he does. And I got exactly what he said he was going to do. I'm going to be weird as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk about, you know, fucking your bitch, all the typical shit, but I'm going to do it in such strange ways. Like, you know, like I-, I compare a lot of these type of artists to, to old dirty bastard. You know, a lot of these guys kind of eat from his table, you know, like that really weird sideways. Sometimes, you know, I do shit that doesn't make any sense. Sometimes I, I rhyme arrhythmic. Sometimes I repeat rhymes because I'm just being fucking weird about it. I really enjoy it for what it is, which is just, he's going to be ridiculous. He's going to say that his weed smells like farts and that, you know, his weed smells like piss. Like, he's going to say shit like that. That's one thing I wanted to, I wanted to ask if we ever Mm -hmm. fucking get Ski Mask on the goddamn podcast. Do you ever smoke anything that (laughs) smells all right? <laughs> like, I've smelled like, weed that I was like, holy shit, that fucking smells awesome. It's never smelled like cat piss. Like, dude, maybe you just got really shitty weed. Like, And who would brag about that? That's what, that's what I'm thinking. Like, wouldn't you be like, I'm getting fucking top shelf choice blue ribbon weed here. You're getting fucking, you're getting trash. You're smoking you're resin. you weed, bro. <laughs> Getting fucking skunk weed. I don't know what you're wasting your money on. It is very much uh, as advertised. There are no um. There's no trickery here. No uh. No bait and switch. First time I listened to it, I wasn't very wild about it. Uh. Second time I listened to it, I was feeling it a good bit. Third time I listened to it, I was like, you know what? All right. That this is fucking. This has won me over. And I'm just going to say this. And you know what? I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on a limb here and say this isn't necessarily an insult, but, like, he could be saying whatever. And I say that a lot on this show, but, like, I guess it just goes to show how, like, yeah, lyrics are important, but at the end of the day, it's, like, just how I feel it and how it sounds to me. Most of the songs at the end of the day are just, like, yeah, it's whatever. The lyrics are whatever, but I was really fucking feeling this, so whatever. You know, like, I was willing to look past shit I wouldn't normally look past because it sounded all right. Like, like Rambo. No, I'm a like Rambo. Like, normally, it was so repetitive, I would hate that. But I was like, this fucking sounds really cool, so I don't care. This, this is an era of personality really being more important than anything else. Yeah, it's style over substance. You know, I mean, he, he actually he actually is pretty lyrical compared to a lot of other guys. True, but yeah. <clears throat> a lot of it really does depend on, like, do you like the voice that you're hearing? You yeah. know? Uh-huh. And if you don't, if, if it's, like, low pump for me and I don't like it, mm-hmm. it's like, he, he, there's nothing else there for you. You know? Yeah. You've got to like the very basic, simple, look, I'm just bragging about being rich. Like, there's nothing there for me. But I like weird. I like, you know, uh, someone who's taking chances and doing things that I'm not expecting. And Mm -hmm. so his personality, I like. He's doing some of the same stuff. The the repeating thing, he does that a lot. You know when they do the the really long sort of repeating chorus and then the short verse and then like that's their bread and butter. If the personality fits it, and for me, I feel like his personality is working overtime for this, my ear wants to listen to it, right? Yeah. I, I will say the She's a Bitch sample felt a little... Like, mm, where was that? The first song, the don 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 da boom 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 boom. Oh, da, da, okay. She's a bitch. Would you say my name? That's what it was. The only thing about that song I didn't like was the fucking uh, the dramatic sting they used on the bridge. That boom boom boom. It was flowing really nice, and then it just stops and just boom 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 boom, boom. and I'm like, eh. And this is kind of funny because (laughs) we're coming to the era of people referencing things directly from my childhood now. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I find that funny because I remember growing up and it was like, you know, all the references that people made 
or like to you know mf doom he references cartoons from the 70s and the 80s yeah mm -hmm. you know he I, I think he mentioned animaniacs once or, or <laughs> that was or right in the, the brain edge. i think you yeah know? yeah but most of the time he's referencing you know scooby-doo and mm -hmm. and the justice league cartoon <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah and so it's funny to hear someone say uh you know, I feel like Dexter got double D's in my laboratory. I was like, yeah. hey, you had the same childhood as me. Like, I'm reaching the age where, like, rappers have, like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's just it's just kind of a funny feeling right now. Like, oh, hey, like, I could reference, like, he references Blue's Clues on the first song. Like, no <laughs> rapper 10 years ago would have done some shit like that, you know? And here's the thing, like, I appreciate those references. I Like, I'm completely fine with it. But the she's a bitch kind of felt a little simple if you're making these references to like late 90s early 2000s stuff okay the audience is people who know these things right so you know we're gonna know that sample and why are you using that one like that's not a particular oh man i'd love to hear someone riff, riff over this type of beat like not really you know what i mean like knock if you buck when such and such uh whoever uh, the people a couple of years ago when they sampled that knock if you buck is a fucking I, that's a southern fucking fried classic, and I see why people are using it. Now, the way they used it was really shitty, because, again, they just fucking, they used it the wrong way. I, I'm just gonna say it. I feel like they used that sample the wrong fucking way. It's just like, this is supposed to be a hardcore fucking sample. If you're gonna flip it, it's gotta be for something, man. Not just for the, this pedestrian dance song. Like, the song's about knock if you fucking buck. Like, what? Maybe I'm just too deep into sampling. And I just really love the idea of, like, someone sampling something for a purpose. Because, you know, not everything needs to be sampled for a purpose. I get it. But it's just, like, that specifically feels like, well, why would you do that one? You know, like, it, it's like, if someone samples Take On Me, there should be a reason for it. Because it's like, you know we know that song, you know? Now, just a little aside here. This person did request that we talk about the album You Will Regret. Didn't necessarily say the Reloaded version, but that's the one that's on Spotify. Yeah, uh, okay, okay. And also, I wanted to make a point, because he puts the bonus tracks first. Yeah, yeah, the, the first three tracks are the bonus tracks, which is odd. You'd think you'd put that, but it's like, hey, you haven't heard this before. I'm putting it fucking front and center. Those are some of the best tracks, actually. <laughs> See, here's the thing. I like Catch Me Outside. I didn't care for Take a Step Back, and I didn't oh. and I didn't care for What the Fuck. Man, I fuck it. Yo, you know, I'm usually sort of like, the sort of like, I, I don't like when people try to make music sound bad on purpose. Because it's like, dude, I mean, there's lots of people trying really hard to make sure their stuff sounds good. Why are you, are you know, purposely making it sound shitty? But when I heard this chorus fucking hit, I was like, I get it. <laughs> now, I'm fuck, I'm moshing. Because that you, shit hit hard, man. When you say bad on purpose, because I think people in the comment section get a misconception of what you mean. Do you mean how, like, loud and, like, shaky Like, lo-fi, yeah, the bass okay. is very, like, obviously blown up, you See, know? See, I thought you would hate that. Because every every time there's a song that's on an album that's, like, too fucking loud, you're like, eh, I couldn't stand that. I couldn't listen to it. But this one, it, it hit that right note, man. Hmm, okay. It hit that thing that just made you go, like, there is something that just inspires within you when a beat hits you at that perfect point where you're just like, okay, dude, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, and this this just hit that fucking, it hit that note, man. The, with the way the music came together, it hit that note. Now, I thought the verses were all right. I thought Triple X did an all right job on that yeah. one. Yeah. Lyrics were fine. Exactly. I just wasn't a big fan of the ridiculous bass on that one. And normally, I'm not too critical of bass. But I was just like, hmm, th this is just a little too much. No other track on the album goes that hard. Yeah, no. <laughs> That's the weird thing. Like, not even What the Fuck. Like, not even the other bonus tracks. Just that one. And with What the Fuck, I liked the horror movie-like beat. I just hated the fucking chorus of that one. Don't fuck up. I'm fucked up. What the fuck? Over. I love that. And, oh, I couldn't stand that shit. I thought it sounded so fucking whack. And it's like, like I said, I don't mind the repetition, but that one, something about those lines over and over again, I just hated it. See, you know what it is? Uh, I will say the two songs, that the choruses that I absolutely did not like. The Rambo uh -huh. and Bird is the Word. 
Oh, man. See, I didn't mind either of those. Those were just lazy to me. Like, like the way it certain... sounded sounded all right to me. And, and, and I think that's really what it is. It's just like, if we're going to break this down to the very basics, it's just like, it really is just how it hits you. And so, when yeah. what gets me is when these sort of hype rappers sound hype, right? Mm. When they sound like, I'm just like, well, if you don't care, like, you know what I mean? The repetition you're talking about, the no ammo, like Rambo, whatever. Yeah. As an intro, I was like, ugh, I don't like this. But after that, I was really starting to feel the verses. And really? then when that came around and ended with it, I was like, now I don't mind it. Like, it oh, worked no, wait, better the- as an outro. Actually, I think the verse, this is one of the tightest verse he's actually had. Like, yeah. the most word flipping all this sort of shit that's going on it's dope i don't even want to quote it it's just dope rambo's dope but fucking just like my piss was when the album fucking like for me punched it into overdrive and i was like there's no looking back like this is the point of no return this is fucking fire like i was digging the choruses and the flow Fucking Made in Tokyo wasn't even that bad. Oh, like, no, no. I disagree with you on that one. I thought he was all right. Made in Tokyo was so average, he brought the song down. No, Made in yeah. Tokyo, or TYO, what he sounds like is, I'm just a normal rapper, you know, uh, uh, I- I'm an average rapper who's not really, like, has really many interesting ideas, and I'm on a track with the guy who actually has a lot of interesting ideas. Yeah. And all I can do is just, repeat some of those more interesting ideas mm. that's what that felt like because like everything he said that was even slightly interesting was just like oh you're just saying that because like he said that you know i think he needed to read the room and listen to h2o and catch me outside and be like oh that's the energy we need yeah okay i should fucking bring that energy not what i normally do because that shit isn't i agree with you that like yeah it was kind of a step down he I was didn't the think Paul it was that Greasy of, of this record. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> if you Paul will. Greasy's the new benchmark for mediocre. <laughs> Especially like... in reference to bringing down a track that would otherwise be pretty dope. Exactly. Pretty hype, you know? Um, And then, what the hell is God? The only track I would say is skippable. I'm listening to this album, and I'm like, man, I love it. He's having fun. He's having a good time, and I'm here for it. You know? And then I get to the... This is the serious track. And I'm like, oh, this is, <laughs> you know, the critics are going to take me serious now, uh, you know? And I'm just like, nah, you can keep this. You could, you could go back to what you were doing before. <laughs> yeah, we didn't necessarily need an interlude, especially one uh, like Gone. Like I said, the only track I would be like, nah, you're not missing anything if you fucking skip over this one. We, uh, there was one line in Bird is the Word. Now, when you're talking about being annoyed by the bird is the word, bird is the word. Now, the thing I thought you were going to say was that you were annoyed by how often he said that he thought outside the box. You know, that's exactly what I, like, it was so repetitive. And like, I think outside of the box. Not right now, you don't. You don't, because repeating things is not thinking outside the box. That's literally what everyone is doing, bro. <laughs> I will say, like, I didn't mind it. I thought it was eh. But specifically when he was like, E.T., I make her phone home, I think outside the box. I was like, you cannot say, I think outside the box, directly after... One of the most cliche. E.T., I make her phone home, you can't. Yeah. Like, I would have been alright, but that is unforgivable. <laughs> <laughs> Adventure Time, and Ever Took a Tab, my only complaint with either of these tracks... And this is a very specific thing that will only apply to me and a handful of other people. I got this thing, misphonia, where a noise sends me into a fight or flight. Is it water? (laughs) No, 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 it's not water. I don't mind water. It's this noise that sounds like he has, like, the worst cotton mouth ever. I don't know if it's, like, a grill he has in. Or what? But you just hear that saliva working around in his mouth. Ew. And it's only <laughs> it's only in those two songs. But I'm just like, uh, 
ah, it's like nails on a chalkboard. It's like the first five seconds of ever took a tab. Just listen to that. You'll know exactly what it means. It sounds like he's just chewing gum into a fucking microphone. And I'm like, why <laughs> would you do this? And this is what I'm afraid is going to happen. I'm afraid that A, this is going to take off and kind of be like the new, remember how Wheezy at the beginning of every track? Oh, uh, yeah. Would fucking, oh, I need to include the sound you and lighten up a joint. Like, I don't need <laughs> to hear your cotton mouth to know you're high. I can just assume that. When on every track you talk about your fucking smelly ass weed. I know! <laughs> You're fucking high, I get it. But otherwise, like, if I can get past that little bit, I didn't mind those songs. It was just that oh. one little thing. And Dirt Face Smook. Dude. Mmm. Scene stealer. Well, okay, when he had that last line, he says, I'm sneaking and geeking, I'm counting up tokens, I'm rounding and rounding, I'm Chucky, I'm cheesing. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What was that one part where he, where he's like, like I'm checking, I'm cheese. You just hear someone in the background go, cheese. <laughs> that fucking, that now, made me laugh. The funny thing is, when like when I first heard it, I didn't think of like Chuck E. Cheese. I thought of like Chucky the doll, and you know how he smiles oh. when it, you know what I mean. <laughs> I didn't even think of that, but yeah, I can see that. I was like, oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> one I was kind of iffy about was Winnie. And I'm only iffy about it because I feel like it was like he was going too fast and it sounded disjointed. Like it at times kind of lost the flow or lost the timing. And And there were times Mm. where he does slow it down. And I'm like, there you go. That sounds fun. And then like before I could even say that he speeds it back up and I'm like, uh, like it's like it's almost hard to follow. Yeah. What what was that uh, one line where he goes like, Yellow diamonds need to use the restroom. Told me go pee pee. I was like, word. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the weaker tracks. Um, it's more repetitive than a lot of the other ones, and it's got a noticeably weaker beat. Like, I wasn't a fan of that one, but that line does make me laugh just because of how dumb it is. In Winnie, halfway through, he was like, I think you heard. You know you heard. I'm flipping the bird, flipping the bird. I think you heard. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, God damn it. I thought we were done with this. <laughs> you thought you got away. No. Just bringing <laughs> that shit back. It was fire. <laughs> Energy, I wanted to like because of the chorus. Mm, but it yeah. did not, oddly enough, it did not match the energy. It did the verses. Like, you know, he's talking about, oh, my name is Ski Pack, the bump god. And the idea is that this is what I sound like when I'm high on cocaine. I'm like, okay, I can go, I can, I can like hear this. I can feel this energy, you know? But then like the verses is like, I'm like, fuck you. Fuck that. Rolling like a hubcap. Only way you're going to blow up is if you fucking light a stick match. Mm. (laughs) Siamese cat, how the pussy look. It's on point. Just like a thumbtack. Like, it just did not match the, the, what I felt like was happening in the chorus. You know, it just, it just didn't feel, and so it really threw it off. You know what I mean? I still liked it. Like, I would still fuck with it. I thought the flow was okay. But, yeah, I was kind of getting a gone kind of feeling from it again. Like, I got the fucking, you're bringing the energy. And a break like this, I don't know. I don't think this is really the type of, song ski mask should be attempting it just doesn't feel like his thing it feels like it's there just to be like look i did something different look i uh i'm diverse i can do more than one thing it's like but you're really good at that one thing (laughs) just maybe do that one thing h2o that was the worst track other than way to end the album oh my god because you see Uh. ski masks thing is water. He says that a lot, in case you haven't noticed. Um, so here's a song where it's all about that. I really liked the beat. I thought the beat was great. Um, but yeah, gonna have her shooting water out of her pussy, H2O, or whatever the fuck he said. I mean, the chorus is just wet, 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 H2O, wet, 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 (laughs) and it's just if you don't like that, you're not gonna. You're if you don't like someone just saying wet for thirty seconds, 
you're you're out of luck with this last song. <laughs> you know what I mean? It and, is a very weak one, yeah. And the verses are so weak too. Yeah. Like, oh my god, X X is fucking verse. Bitch, I cut off the leash. I do not want your yeast. Peace to the Middle East. I want your Reese's peace. <laughs> and and the way he says it, I want your Reese's peace. I'm like, what? <laughs> Why was he trying? I just want to say, first of all, no one likes fucking Reese's pieces. That's not. Uh, and so, mm, well, and on top of that, mm, no one's going to use that as a metaphor for pussy. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, I want your Reese's pe- Really? So, yeah, all together. Oh, and then they made Yu-Gi-Oh! and American Idol references. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> just to let you know. I'm like, I like this, though. I like that. Because I remember I made a rap song, and I and I put in a, it's a waste of skill going after y'all. Might as well catch a Rattata with a master ball. Yeah. And, you know, I felt kind of geeky for making that reference. Like, oh, man, is that, do people in rap really talk about Pokemon like that? And it was like, oh, these motherfuckers talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! and Ed, Ed and Eddie. All right, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think that line's are we, pretty slick, Are we all though, cool with the fact that we all watch these shows? Like, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, overall, I think this is a perfect, like, three out of five. I would actually lean more towards a four. Only because Whoa, I was, really? I was Ooh. really feeling it, dude. He, uh, yeah. A ski mask really won you over. He really did. <laughs> like, <laughs> because, dude, I was just driving home, and I was fucking moving to these goddamn beats. <laughs> and, like... I don't know if he could take credit for all of that, but just an album as a whole, I would gladly listen to this again. And like I said, three fucking times, I was really feeling it. Yeah, I was, uh, I was surprised, especially, at especially at first when I was like, man, I don't know, I'm really enjoying this Travis Scott album more than, no, man, fucking, fucking <laughs> Ski Mask actually <laughs> takes the prize by a nose. Would you fucking look at that? slinks in there. But we've talked about it enough already. We gotta talk about Astro World, the album. Uh, Travis Scott has only come up every so often on the show. Uh, he was in a really underwhelming Rihanna song on Anti, the fucking... Yeah, because that's how I mainly knew him. He was just like... <sighs> and he did the that... fucking weak woo. He did that, I think it was like a Fast and the Furious soundtrack song. And since then... Travis Scott has gone on to be the forgotten real N-word here in... Ha 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 ha! Only one real one here! Uh, n- only two... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Tra- I-, I just didn't see you. <laughs> uh, you are fucking- you are in my blind spot. I just fucking forgot you were here. And he's also player two in Drake's, uh, Fortnite Twitch stream. Hmm. Remember that? When the news was like, Drake was on Twitch, and he was fucking streaming Fortnite. Oh yeah, he was playing with Travis Scott, so he he was there too, uh, I guess. <laughs> so they just kind of had to, like, put his name in the already written headline, like, Drake right. and Travis Scott play Fortnite. <laughs> uh, yeah, edit, he was there. Edit, and Travis Scott. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know he's, he's basically holding Texas on his back right now. Because he's kind is of the he? big... He is the big one out of Texas at this current mm. moment. Mm, okay. Um, mm. Now, for the longest time, I I was like... It was interesting, because I remember reviewing his song, uh, Night, uh, The Night Show, or uh, Antidote. And I remember being like, it feels very typical at first, but it kind of does a switch up near the middle. Where it's just like, it's just building to this sort of weird, creepy, ominous vibe. And I'm like, oh, that's... He did something there. This was beyond just, like, the normal, you know, rap song. He broke the sort of structure in a way. And I thought that was kind of cool. So hearing this album was definitely an expansion upon that. Like, this album legit actually feels, in a way, like, out of this world. Like, I feel like he took the cloud rap sound and put it in the actual fucking stars. You know, no diss to, uh, your boy Kid Cudi, who he is inspired by. But I've never personally been able to get into Kid Cudi as much. Because I felt, like, I, I I don't know. I've always just felt like his music was a bit pretentious. This was way more accessible and tangible yes. than anything I'd heard from Kid Cudi. I'll, I'll fact, absolutely diss Kid Cudi the fucking drop of a hat. This album in, yeah. was leaps and bounds ahead of that whatever the fuck Passion, album we were from and him. Demon Slaying, yeah. Oh my god, I hate that you were able to think of that off the top of your head so fast. Yeah, that was so fucking... Bleh. But and no, in, I dug this. And in fact, I actually liked... Kid Cudi on this album. Yeah. And, in fact, I would go further to say that it feels like 
a lot of the guests really make the album. It's interesting. It feels like these guests bring the best out of Travis. They make great songs. It doesn't feel like, you know how, like, with Like Love Jean, you know, it's like, Everyone here is great, but Wyke Love John is bringing this whole thing down. If he was just gone. No, it's the opposite. It's like, yeah, these other people here. And because of that, it feels like he's he's actually putting in, you know, his best, his most creative sort of fascinating work. Stargazing. Just the first track had just an amazing beat. Kind of a weird lyric with the niggas female and they excelling. Are they in telling what you telling? I don't know what that was about. <laughs> but, and then. I didn't know that he is apparently dating, uh, uh, what's her name? Kylie Jenner? Oh, uh-huh, yeah. And I think she appears in one of the videos or something like that, and he brings her up, and I was like, oh, shit, okay, this motherfucker, fucking never mind whatever the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> like, he's got a fucking billionaire, almost billionaire girlfriend on his arm, fuck whatever I'm, <laughs> whatever bullshit I'm hollering. <laughs> um, but anyway, oh, you know what, actually, yeah. There is the song Carousel. Uh, going back earlier, we were talking about, like, it doesn't really feel like a, a theme park, but I could see, like, you know, Carnival in a small way. He brought it up so rarely, though. Like, yeah. you can't just name a track Carousel and maybe be like, oh, man, I'm there. I'm fucking picturing Astro World. Like, th- that was one of the tracks I didn't actually care for as much. Mm. It was one of the weaker ones, in my opinion. No, I, I would disagree, because Frank Ocean... Frank Ocean with that fucking hook. <laughs> well, sure. Okay, yeah. I'll give it to him. But you're right. The second verse did feel a little scattershot. I, okay, I'll give you that one. I thought just about everybody did a really good job. Fucking Drake on Seco Mode. The fucking... I joked about it when we were watching the music video for uh, Stop Trying to Be God, which, by the way, you could watch on Patreon uh, for a $1 donation. We, we did a little reaction video uh, to the music video that dropped yesterday, so uh, link will be somewhere with fucking stevie wonder on harmonica man like what how <laughs> did you swing that and that was one of the best songs on the whole goddamn album of course oh it's the one God. with stevie wonder on it <laughs> it's a fucking tour de force there aren't a lot of tracks on here that are like stand out but i think a lot of them are memorable enough you're getting something orally that you're not getting from another song. Like, you gotta listen to this, because it's just gonna make you feel something in that way. And, you know, where I actually disagree a little bit on Sicko Mode, just because I think, like, if we're gonna take into account the entire song, right, and just mm-hmm. how it flows, this one's kind of awkward with the way it just splits into three parts for no real <laughs> reason. Yeah, I was like, is that it? No? <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> it was just like, what? why did that happen? It felt very faux Kendrick, you know? Like, oh, look, look, we cut the song off in the middle and we went to another song. Yeah, that's kind of a popular thing that people are doing right now, right? On their albums. And then someone, uh, a friend of mine actually brought up an interesting point. So after the uh, Kanye album from this year, this album feels very, okay, well, since Kanye doesn't want to give you a Kanye oh, album, Oh, shit. I'll do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> because there's one verse on here straight up and down you could not tell me that wasn't oh, Kanye yeah, West one? rapping that shit but I'm trying to remember if it was this one or NC-17 because NC-17 had that dope fucking opening line where he's like we don't do playgrounds nah we don't swing sets shorty got the K we don't entertain threats <laughs> like I, I like that was a fucking you can't you can't run on that one that was just a good fucking line but I didn't like uh, you know what I did not like the dude who did the the party never ends the the juice world guy it felt like i i'll i'll give him a little sh- bit of shit because like it felt very out of like he has a very weak sounding voice and it just feels weird for this like very weak sort of young child like voice to be saying we're partying really crazy man you know like it just <laughs> you know i i didn't really mind it so much because the party never ends because it's constantly fucking surrounded by yeah! All right! <laughs> it's lit! Like, um, yeah? Is it? Is it lit? <laughs> uh, uh, pff, if you fucking say so. Skeletons. That was it. Yup. As soon as I fucking heard him rapping, I straight up was like, that wasn't Kanye? Like, are you <laughs> sure? <laughs> that really does. Wow. Yeah. I didn't, uh, I didn't really pick up on too much of a similarity listening to this, honestly. 
and and maybe it's just because it's like, you know, eh, I wasn't really, I don't really have Kanye on the mind. You know the lyrics where he said, "If you take your girl out, do you expect sex? If she take a titties out, do you expect checks?" Like, yeah. That's very Kanye. Yeah, you know? that oh, is a Kanye first quote. visit, I gave her a pearl necklace. <laughs> Next visit, I'm going to need your girl naked. That is Kanye. That, that totally, in delivery and lyrics. Right? Sounds like that was <laughs> like, maybe, maybe that's a holdover from fucking TurboGrafx-16, the Kanye mm. album we didn't get in favor of Ye. That he was like, yeah, here's, here's some fucking... Lines I didn't feel like using. Here, 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 my fucking leftovers. If I see Kanye on the writer's credit, wow, they're saying no, he's not credited as a writer, and he has no credits anywhere on Astro World. Okay, I, I guess. Is... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't all know. right, <laughs> if you say we're, so. We started giving that side eye. Going <laughs> <laughs> right. on, any motherfucker? Fucking, we got to talk about NC Seventeen. I gotta ask a question real quick. Did 21 Savage fucking kill it? Mm, I think 21 Savage right. fucking... Yo, did you hear? The fucking first thing he says, I got three main bitches thinking they my main bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, God damn. <laughs> I put, even posted that on Twitter. I was like, 21 Savage, the diabolical. <laughs> fucking Savage is right. It's like, yeah, I was like, Jesus Christ. And then... What does he say? He says, um, yo bitch gave, gave the kid Cuddy, but I'm not signed to yay. I nutted in her cheek, her new name, baby face. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but God damn it. <laughs> and the thing is, he had, his flow is very like, I don't really care about what I'm saying. Like, that's what he always sounds like. Right. And on his album, that definitely gets boring. But when you have a focus 21, and he and he's like he actually is writing some interesting stuff, but it's still delivered through that sort of like I'm just kind of saying it. <laughs> it just matches perfectly in small doses. Yeah, your boy comes through. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fucking Yosemite, mm. the acoustic guitar they put in there. I was like, is that okay. is that the one with John Mayer on guitar? Uh, who was it? Uh, no, it's someone, some dude named Turbo. Turbo. Yeah. Is that fucking Kanye's <laughs> pseudonym? Yeah, pseudonym. <laughs> oh no, it was Turbo. Hmm. Like the lyrics weren't that great, but No. Like the beat was like I rocked with it. It really is one of those just like I feel you're feeling the vibe. Like it, that's just what it is. And then of course Butterfly Effect was dope, but I think that's mainly just because I'd heard that like a year ago. So my ears just kinda used to it. That was getting constant rotation on the radio around here. It, and then Coffee Bean was a split from everything else. Yeah. It's like they put that at the end on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Like this like this seemed like it probably wasn't even going to make the album. Like, oh, this is too personal, you know. Yeah. But he put it on anyway, and I'm fucking saluting him for it. Yeah. I liked that it, one. It, when he was talking about, uh, you feel this deep in your torso, feels like someone reading your horoscope, some shit only me and the Lord knows. SOS, that's only for those who hear in the Morse code. I, that was fucking genius right there. When he was saying, like, this, like, he, cause he's talking directly to the person who this is about, right? And I love that he's saying, some shit only me and the Lord knows, like, SOS for those who hear this in Morse code. Like, I'm, t if you are the person who this is for, yes, this is directly for you, but no one else is gonna fucking know, you know? Like, no one's gonna know the particulars of what I'm saying and how it's making you feel right now. You know? Um, and then he says, man, he goes, uh, this is where the remorse goes. Th this shit'll have you in divorce coat, uh, fighting over your seeds, writing over your deeds, sliding over your keys. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, he was, like, that, that is impressive. Someone who's able to, like, put really complex multis together and still make it a part of a story and not feel like they're just, like, you know, throwing these in there just to feel like, well, I need to throw something that's a big word in here, you know, really multiple, you know, throw in unnecessary multis. No, there were multis that all felt like they were necessary in explaining what was happening. And I was like, holy shit, he made that work, you know? So I definitely got to give him props on Coffee Bean. W was there anything you else, wa else you wanted to add? Because that, that, I'm about to give my rating on it. 
Um, not too much. J- just looking it over, and, and some folks we forgot that John Mayer was on uh, Astro Thunder, and okay. I, th- I think Thunder Cat was also on that one. Which I'm just gonna go ahead and say this as someone who does listen to like a good bit of like rock stuff on the side. You don't get John Mayer and Thundercat on your album unless you're going to let them fucking shred. Like, John Mayer is whatever, but dude, if anyone listened to fucking Drunk by Thundercat, you would not identify him on this album because his fucking wings are clipped so much. Like, you don't get someone that fucking known for being wild and out there and not let them show their shit. You know, right? Like, get their like shit in. you don't get... You know, slash for beat it without giving him a solo. Yeah, exactly. Well, that was fucking uh, Eddie Van Halen. Excuse me, excuse me. No, he got slash for uh, it was Dirty Diana. Oh shit! Really? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But yeah, if you fucking listen to Beat It, it's like that sounds like 1984 era Eddie Van Halen too, and it's just like no. Not only am I gonna fucking shred, but it's for gonna sure. like it's gonna have my fucking signature on it that everyone's gonna know who the hell did this because it has an iconic sound wait hold on hold on hold on hold on who did the guitar solo in uh dirty diana then was it not not slash i know he did one fucking song with him was it give in to me that he did oh i was gonna say it would probably have to be a somewhat like maybe 90s track right hold on unless it's not Uh, dangerous and i know he was featured yeah, it was it was dangerous. Hmm. I'm ge- dude, this shit's getting all the way pushed back. It's like, oh yeah, the guitar solo on that song. Now nah, that was Steve Stevens. Ah shit. Well, <laughs> wasn't the guitar solo on that one? <laughs> you got some fucking the 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 Mandela effect, Berenstain Bears thing here. It's like I could have <laughs> swore <laughs> that was fucking Slash. It wasn't. <laughs> okay, now I'm remembering. There was a reunion live 2001 where they did beat it. They performed Beat It and Slash did the solo on it. Oh. And that makes me up because he also originally did the solo on Give In To Me because I remember him in the video. Oh, okay. But that's messing with me. It's like, God damn it. You, you know what song he was on. Why did you do that? <laughs> I, I guarantee you if you ask, like, I feel like no one's actively, like, talked about it yet. But I feel like if you started asking people, like, oh, yeah, who did the solo on Beat It? I swear to God, people are going to start saying Slash. Man. They're going to have that Mandela effect because they Mm-mm. fucked it up with this live 2001. We're going to have to start putting the truth out there. Fucking set the record straight. Yeah, because look, I, I was about to fuck it up uh, because of that. Because I remember I remember this video because I remember my mom recorded it. We were really into oh. the Jacksons. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's right. <laughs> um, now, like before, I'd said that uh, Ski Mask just barely eked out Travis Scott by a nose. Uh, I, I stand by that. And I'm gonna say that I would probably give Astro World like a uh, like a three point seven five. I would actually go ahead and give it that four. Mm. I think that it does a lot of interesting work here. Stop trying to be God is a fucking showstopper. Yeah, a lot of songs are challenging in ways that he didn't need to be. That's and, true, yeah. and you have to reward someone who's willing. Like this, this feels like the spreading. Of his wings as an artist, you know, mm. and and I want to, I I think we need to give props to that because I was like, okay, he could have just come with a couple of like dumbass fucking auto tuned, you know, shits, but he actually, I feel like he he actually put his foot in this one. I would say that this album is a better traditional album than Ski Mask. Ski Mask is more that album is pure. We're fucking around, like from the lyrics to. Like, it's it's a goddamn, like, mixtape ass, like, it's just fucking dudes hanging out doing what, doing what fucking ever. Astro World, you can tell, is thought out. It's methodical. It's actually, you know, it, everything is there for a reason. The fucking features are top-notch. You got the biggest fucking names on this album. Like, it's no fucking Joe Schmo on this thing. Like, everyone's bringing it. Um... Yeah, but just as far as, like, a how much I enjoyed it, just bare bones as that, I liked it, but they were, like, uh, maybe, like, four or five songs where I'm like, eh, eh, I probably wouldn't listen to that again by choice. And it's also 17 tracks, it's an hour, like, some of them probably, 
You know, they don't hit as hard as other ones. Um, so there's a little bit too much filler, I thought. But there are some really uh, big highlights on here. Um, just as a hit single, Butterfly Effect stood out to me. Uh, fucking Coffee Bean. No bystanders, just a fucking shouting. Just aggressive, that track was. I loved that. Uh, Stop Trying to Be God, like you said, it's a fucking masterpiece. R.I.P. Screw. Oh, I forgot about we that one. We didn't even mention that yeah, one. Yeah, that was... Uh, respect for that one, man. The dedication to, yeah, like a legend in, you know, the Texas sound, you know? There's definitely some very personal moments on here. I do wish there were more, though. Especially like he's teasing you with R.I.P. Screw and Coffee Bean that it's like, man, yes. I know it. If this is where it's going, you know, like, <laughs> like, and I'm interested to see where this is going. Uh, only songs that I, were, I was kind of half and half on were uh, Carousel, uh, 5% Tint, I was like, eh. Uh, Astro Thunder, Yosemite was kind of, mm. And the awkwardly titled Houston Fornication. Yeah, that was weird. Like, Californication. I get it. That's a fucking por- <laughs> That's a fucking Portman too. Houston for like <laughs> stop. <laughs> no, but I enjoyed it. I would recommend both albums uh this week. Obviously, people have been all in our comment section from last week asking where the fuck Travis Scott was, so they don't need us to recommend it. They've already listened to it. But we're just getting around to it now. We got a crap ton of Patreon requests to get through, so you gotta bear with us sometimes. Well, that about wraps it up for this week's episode of the Going Off Podcast. Thank you very much for checking us out. If this is your first time listening to us, all of our old episodes are on SoundCloud and iTunes and YouTube, unlike your boy, Alex Jones! And you- <laughs> I had to do it. Um, you can follow us on Twitter. Check us out on Patreon. You know, sometimes? Sometimes? <laughs> um... And uh, for the Going Off Podcast, uh, I'm Muse. And I'm the Rap Critic. And I'm whipping the ball, whipping the ball, I hit with that ball, I hit with that ball. Just the way it's in the background, it sounded like an old man. I hit with that ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh.